them in and oh here you can get thirty five, forty thousand dollars for a car. Come on and get the car. And then they don't know, you know, all of this stuff is piling up. Absolutely. You know, all these hits on their credit, you know, all this other stuff that they're trying to do. And they're like, wait a minute, my credit was was up here and now it's down here. And, and I guess with everything else that's going on, things are much tighter. Do you um do you you're I'm trying to figure out how like where is the I guess there's no place from what you said, you, you say yes. Yeah, so there's really because I think a lot of times people will become a little embarrassed maybe by their situation or where they are or, you know, they feel like I'm, I'm this old. I've, I'm, I've not saved like I should. You know, it, where do you start? Is, is savings where you start? I mean, where everybody starts or. Well, I, I'm going to tell you that the mindset is where you start, okay. you know, because if you have the right mindset, you know, we. We, we can find partners and we can find pro, um, programs uh, that will help with your deposit. We can find um, other investors that, you know, that, that we work with that can even uh, take over the, uh, the first lien position of a house. But if you don't have the mindset, and that's, again, why we call ourselves advisors, because um, in reality, the purchase of the home is one of the most significant purchases that a, a consumer will actually make. I mean, you're talking about, you know, anywhere from the ranks of $50,000 to $900,000 house. Um, and that's a significant, um, that's a significant uh, um, purchase. And so for a lot of um, clients that have been renters all their life, that's, that's huge, you know, mm-hmm. and especially when you're hearing about the foreclosure rate and you're hearing about, you know, the, the, the market going up and down and, you know, there's all these um, questionable uh, things that uh, the economy is doing. Uh, it is a, um, um, an intimidating factor. So we uh, the first thing I would say is get your mind right. If you're if your mindset is, you know, I want to be a homeowner, then there's nothing that that we will, will will stop us from helping you achieve that. But if your mindset, and that goes back to the purchase of the Corvette or the, you know, the Porsche or the, or the boat trip, the cruise, you know, if your mindset is not where it needs to be, then what you're going to start doing is, you, you know, you may tend to see this um, gain that you're making in reference to your credit or in reference to your savings, and you'll start thinking of some other things to do. Uh, and so when we talk about, you know, later in the show, when we talk about building legacy and building wealth, again, it goes back to the mind, the mindset. And so we will take you um, at the very beginning stages because we have partners, especially in the state of Maryland, especially in Prince George's County. We have financial partners that will even work with you on savings where they will um, they will um, devise a plan and have you contribute to a liquid savings fund uh, monthly or, bi- or or biweekly uh, so that your savings can get up to five to ten thousand dollars, you know, in four to five years. So, you know, it, wherever you are is where we're taking. you. If you if you have the money and you don't have the credit, then we have partners that we will connect you with that will work on. Um, you know, what you need to do to en- enhance your credit score. Um, it's and, and the formula is the lower your credit, the more money you typically need. The more money, you know, the, the higher your credit, the less money you need. And that's the formula that you can almost really um, walk with because if you have high credit, then you have a lot of uh, institutions, a lot of grants, a lot of nonprofits that will give you that that uh, that initial uh, deposit to get into the house. But if you have low credit, then they're going to want you to come to the table with something. You know, they want you to put meat on, at the, uh, on the bone, as they say. Uh, so, but in either way, either cir- circumstance at GPS Solutions, we will work with you all the way through um, because our desire is to create homeowners. And I will share with you that I've had, several clients that started with us and in the process of going through um, uh, our partners and working with their credit and working with savings, they got to the position where before we were able to find a house for them, they were actually qualified to get a, you know, a letter from uh, the bank, a qualification letter for the bank where they went to a traditional realtor and, and got a house, you know, so 
Again, they didn't go through our program, but they are a homeowner, and you know, thus we are satisfied. Uh, Shannon, you're talking, but you're on mute. I think she had a question. Sorry. How long um, is the process of your um, program? It depends on the it depends on the client. Um, I will tell you, our lease options typically run between three to five years for for a rent to own program. And what we do is we structure our leases so that at the end of three years, you have the option to buy out the property at any time after three years. So I will say a minimum of three years, maximum of five years. But again, if you're doing all that you're supposed to do and you reach that five year mark and you just can't get that qualification, you know, at GPS, you know, if we have the control, we won't have a problem extending it for another year based on your situation. Okay. So, so take us through what that typically looks like. For example, I hear you saying rent to own. Yes. What What does that look like? What is the Is there a, a different threshold for qualifying for that particular program? And just what can a person expect if they if they go to the rent to own option? Great question, Chief. Great question. So, rent to own um, is allowing you as a potential homeowner to move into the house that you desire to own at the end of the rental process. And it allows you to get into this house without the substantial um, paperwork, credit, and qualifications that you need to sit down at a settlement table. Mm -hmm. Um, So what you're doing is you're paying a rental fee while you are working on whatever deficiency you have. So you're paying for three years, as I mentioned earlier, um, at the basic of our program, for three years you're paying a rental fee, which is probably somewhere around where the mortgage would be. Okay. Uh, and But you don't have ownership of the house. You are just at that time qualified as a renter. Mm-hmm. But your mindset is this is your house. So at the end of this program, you you know uh, if if you if you uh, want to put carpet in there if you want to paint the walls if you want to cut the grass this is your house this is different than renting a house or renting an apartment where sure. you 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 don't even have the option of the purchase right so while you're getting your mindset together while you're getting your 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 finances together whether you're getting your credit together you are actually living in the house that you desire to own. And you're getting in there on a basis of the current value of rent that you're paying, again, which is structured somewhere around where the mortgage would be. Okay. So if the mortgage for this typical house would be $1,100, then that's somewhere around where your rent will be. Okay. Um, And at the end of the term, what we will do is we will give you a rental credit to go towards your down payment. As you go to the settlement table. So, so for example, if I'm renting that house behind you and does the, does the owner say in the contract, I will not sell this house while you're in this program. How do you know that at the end of the program, the owner said, you know what, uh, change my mind. And, and now you have to start all over again or, or how does that work? <laughs> yes, great question, Chief. Do you great question. Full of them today. Uh, <laughs> all right, so yes, the the the, the lease contract. If uh, for people that know uh, about renting, you know that you you enter into a lease agreement or a rental agreement, and that that rental agreement typically goes for one two years, and that apartment or that house is yours for the time of that agreement. So it's no different in the lease option or the rent to own. It is a rent to own contract. And the rental own contract typically states that for the period of X years, you have the right to rent with the option, not the requirement to purchase the house at the end of the term. So as a, if I were the owner of this house behind me and you were the, the prospective pr- tenant, mm-hmm. you would have the option to purchase but I would have the obligation to sell to you. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, and that's all laid out in the contract. And again, our contracts are pretty much centered where after th- the third year that you have 
any time period between three to five years that you could actually purchase that that house outright. So so everybody wins. So the the owner of the property gets three years worth of rent or five years worth of rent, and the the tenant pays that rent for three to five years. But at the end of that at at the end of that time, they can then decide to purchase. If they don't, uh, no harm, no foul, because the landlord still got five years worth of rent. Is that how it works? Yes, the landlord still has five yeah, five years worth of rent. The landlord still has your option fee. It's not a it's not a security deposit. It is an option fee, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, the landlord still has the house. Um, the tenant, um, they they had the peace of mind of knowing that um, they were they were living in and taking care of a house. Uh, it, as life changes, circumstances changes. Things come up, you know, a divorce happens, you know, uh, life circumstances happen, job, um, um, uh, jobs uh, come and go. Uh, so, again, it gives the tenant the option and not the obligation to purchase, but the landlord has the obligation to sell. So it is a, it is a win-win um, where the tenant is, may, although they may be out of the option fee, mm-hmm. they still can go somewhere else and and not have, be obligated like a foreclosure if they were to purchase the house uh, from the very beginning. And and so who holds on to the option fee? I'm sorry, Shannon, I cut you off. Yeah, go, go ahead. Shannon. So I have a question. Uh, do any of the rent goes towards the purchase of the house or is just the option fee? So for our program, for, for our program is the option fee. Um, there are some rent to own programs where a portion of the rent goes towards the, um, your, your, your closing costs. We have found at GPS solutions that a lot of lenders frown upon that when they are compiling your, um, your history. Uh, and they can typically, depending on how much above the market rate you are charging your client, um, they can disqualify that rent uh, profile as a benefit and we don't want to do that. So that's why we say we kind of keep the rent close to where the mortgage would be. So that when we go to a lender or when the client goes to a lender, the lender will look at their rental history and find that, Hey, well, they've been paying $1,100, you know, for five years, the mortgage is $1,100 or the mortgage is $1,200. You know, that's a good fit. Now, if I was charging you $2,000, and the mortgage will now be $1,100, a lot of times some lenders, not all, but some lenders will frown against that and will say, well, we'll just, just disqualify that as a, um, as a, uh, a benefit uh, for you getting into the house. So yeah. we, we want to make you marketable. We, we really want to make you attractive to potential lenders. That's, that's the purpose of the lease to options. Okay. Mike, I'm sorry I cut you off now. <laughs> Oh, no, that's, that's no problem. You, you want to know where that option fee went. Yeah, so the option fee, exactly. yes. So when you talk about win-win, so the option fee, again, is uh, is, is bringing uh, skin into the, to the game. Okay. Um, where in a t- typical rental scenario, you have a uh, rental deposit, which is typically a first, uh, first month's deposit or something like that. The option fee in a lease option, is typically about three to five percent of the house, the cost of the house, depending on um, depending on what state you're in, depending on the market. Again, this is used as a credit for your deposit uh, or your at your closing. So when we go to the closing table, we can say that they've already put up three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, whichever three percent is, um, and then that's what FHA looks at when they want the buyer to qualify for the loan. They look at the the, the down payment that the potential buyer has made. So we have our option fee structured so that it's three to 5% so that it kind of fits inside of that. And that's non-refundable. And that's you bring in, um, again, skin to the game. If you put down 3% of a house and you move into the house, uh, the the landlord or the owner of that house is pretty confident that you're not going to you know, you're not going to tear it up. You're not going to play games. You're not going to, um, you know, you're not going to um, walk away, therefore leaving them in a position where they thought they had a house that was sold and it did not sell. 
And then, of course, they have that if, if you tear up the house, they have that money that they can repair the house and then put it back on the market. 